Hey YouTube land, my name is Taylor and in this video I'm going to show you how I built a donation box. I made this box for a bake sale that my family was running for our church. And as my wife and I were thinking about what we wanted to bake but also how we wanted to present our table and present all of our baked goods, what she said to me was, you can make a donation box for this if you want, I guess. What I heard was, you need to make a donation box for this bake sale because without one, it will be an utter and complete failure. No one wants to buy baked goods from someone who asks them to put money in a basket. So here we are. Let's build it. I started by selecting a piece of rough sawn superior from the bottom of one of my stashes of the wood shop. I got a decent amount of these three foot long cutoffs from a local shop. Just taking some important measurements here. The milling process began with resawing over at the bandsaw. Uh, fun fact, you can also see here how my dad taught me to dance when I was 12. Thanks, Dad. As you can clearly see, though, I've, I've improved a lot since then. I resawed the piece twice to make three boards, which I'm going to use to create a panel for the sides and the bottom of the box. Here's the second time through. After resawing, it was over to the joiner to get one clean face on each board. I like to join one face, then plane the other face, so that when I go back to the jointer, I have the option to joint either edge based on the grain direction, since both faces are parallel to each other. My dust collector is out of commission at the moment, so I'm getting wood chips everywhere. I've got the hose connected to the dust board just for show and so that the planer doesn't vomit all over my garage. After planing down to a thickness of about a half an inch, it's back over to the jointer where I clean up one edge and then over to the table saw to clean up the last edge. These boards ended up half inch thick and two and a half inches wide. Because nothing's ever where it's supposed to be in my shop, I found my bar clamps. I have to go hunt for my F clamps and some pieces of plywood covered in plastic wrap, which I'll use as calls. I ran a bead of glue down one board because I'm a one side glue kind of guy. I try not to be wasteful, so I tend to go easy on the glue the first time, which I did here. And I usually realize about 15 seconds later I shouldn't be so stingy with the glue, so I add some more and spread it around. Put those into the clamps, line things up perfectly, and tighten them up. Yep, that's not going anywhere. I put my calls on and let it sit for a couple of hours to dry. This panel is going to be the size of my box and is 5 inches wide. Then the most satisfying part of any project by far is, of course, scraping off the semi-dried glue gumdrops. Tasty. I ran that chumpy through the planer to make sure everything was flat after the glue up and brought it down to final thickness of half an inch. I then measured and marked the length for each of the sides of the box. I cut the panel into smaller pieces before then cutting the miters. Then I set the table saw blade to 45 degrees and cut miters on all four sides of the pieces, bringing them all down to their final length. I set the angle of the blade using a digital angle finder and made some test cuts prior to running my actual pieces through the table saw. So now I've got all my sides to the box cut and laid out here. I wanted to put them all together to see how the miters fit and make sure that I didn't need to make any other adjustments, so I stood them all up and used a rubber band to hold everything together. Up next was making a panel that would become the bottom of the box. It was made from the third of the three boards that I ended up with after resawing and milling. So I set these up in the clamps, but this time I was not quite so stingy on the glue. While that was drying, I installed my dado blade in the table saw and turned my attention back to the box sides. 
The bottom panel will be rabbited on all four sides and will sit inside of a quarter inch wide dado that's run on the inside of the sides of the box. The dado sits half an inch from the bottom of the box, so I set my fence and went to work. After the glue up on the bottom panel was dry, I ran it through the planer to bring it down to its final thickness of half an inch and then cut it to its final dimensions. I went back to the dado blade to cut the quarter inch rabbit on all four sides of the bottom panel, which will then fit into the groove that I just cut on the bottom of each of the side pieces. I had this chunk of soft maple that had some figure in it and I thought it would look really nice for the lid and would pair well with the sapile. It was two inches thick so I had to take multiple passes at the table saw to trim off the live edge and cut it down to size. I resawed, then planed the lid down to three quarters of an inch thick and cut it to its final dimensions over at the table saw. The lid is three quarters of an inch thick because the plan is to rabbit the lid the same way I did the box bottom, which will then fit into a quarter inch dado cut on the inside of the box sides. The dado will be half an inch from the top of the sides, so this maple center will sit a quarter inch proud compared to the outside edges of the box. And to add just the right amount of pizzazz, I used a 3 8 inch roundover bit with a small bearing on it so it left just a little bit of a ledge on the roundover. I marked out where the slot would be for people to insert their valuables, drilled a couple of holes, and used the scroll saw to cut out the slot. Next was gluing up the sides with the top and bottom in place. The top and bottom panels are not glued in place, but just sit in the dados to allow for any wood movement that may occur. I used blue tape to hold the mitered edges together and did a test to make sure everything would close up properly. I added glue to all the edges, forgot to record the whole thing, set the bottom and top into the dados and wrapped everything in a few rubber bands to make sure there was a little more pressure. After the glue dried, I used my spline jig to cut three splines in each corner. Using one of the cutoffs from when I trimmed the lid, I cut out my splines. I had enough space on that one cutout for exactly the 12 splines that I needed. I added glue to each spline and popped them into place. Instead of using a flush trim saw or the band saw and then some extensive sanding, I can very easily use a block plane and make quick work of the splines. A little sanding is always required, but using the block plane to remove almost all of the waste, it doesn't require much. It was then time to separate the top from the bottom. It probably doesn't matter much, but I used my thin curve blade to do this so that I could reduce the amount of the box that just ends up as sawdust. I cut three sides then put blue tape on to hold the lid in place while I cut the fourth side. I removed the tape and voila! At this point I only had a couple things left to do which were to install hinges and apply some finish. I chose some simple brass butt hinges that complemented the sapile very well. Originally I planned to install some sort of locking mechanism since this was going to hold money after all, but I wasn't going to have time to do that before the big bake sale. So I drilled some holes and epoxied some rare earth magnets to hold the lid closed. I applied Danish oil for the finish and boy does it look good. My camera ran out of memory as I was applying the finish but luckily I caught this much. After letting the finish dry overnight I screwed the butt hinges back on and called it a day.
Oh yeah, the bake sale went very well, and this video wouldn't be complete without showing some pictures of the spread. Thanks for watching. Leave me some comments on what you thought.